weight right now is 91, and that's really low. I've seen a lot of people use low numbers there. Uh, mine's low right now because I don't have any passengers loaded. I took them out because I wanted it to be I wanted to be light. Uh, normally, you would have a lot more. In fact, uh, 737-800 is normally like 116k. Uh, so that's like seven ooh, twenty. 25,000 pounds heavier <laughs> than uh, than it is right now with uh, you know, fuel and passengers and all that kind of stuff. Our fuel right now is very low and our passengers are zero. So cost index uh, not uh, really modeled well so in any of these sims as far as I know uh, so I'm just going to throw a 99 in there. I don't even know what that means. So I've seen uh, real pilots on videos and whatnot do it uh, do put all sorts of different numbers in there so I'm not really sure uh, like I said really short flight we can't even get up to transition altitude we're just gonna go to 12 uh, it's only uh, like 140 miles so we're not even gonna be able to get to uh, you can't even I tried 14 once and I, I had trouble getting down in time it was uh, it was coming down real fast so it was a pain in the butt let's see if that helped it did look at that it helped our root get fleshed out a little bit so the, we gave it some information in the uh, F FMC uh, figured it all out so we it could show it us on, uh, on the CDU here so uh, let's see if we can put update our Lee Ross crossing info Aha, there we go very good uh, on route I may drop nut be down because yeah, as you can see it's only 40 miles and we got to drop like 9,000 feet and a whole pile of speed and nine seven thirty seven eight hundred are just ridiculously fast on the way down. So hopefully uh hopefully maybe we'll 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 take a look at it on the way there and see how things are going. So uh we have to go to our initial reference page or take off reference page now and I, I usually take off uh, especially this light we're gonna only gonna use five flaps. And as soon as we do that, uh, our V1, VR, and V2 come in. It already knows about the runway. It already knows about wind and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to hit the CG. And it's going to automatically fill in the CFG. We don't have to calculate it because uh, 737 next gen jets are really smart. And they just put those tables back in there. And it always blew me away that pilots have to look at these tables for this kind of stuff. If it's a table, put it in the damn computer. So it took them till now to do that? That's crazy. Anyway, you, you know, you see these, even Boeing 757 pilots, they're always checking out their uh, their charts to see what their VRFs are and all that kind of stuff. So that's a little weird for me, but oh well. Look, there it is. And I don't know if you heard that noise as soon as I turned it on and figured out the CFG. And it also set up the trim and set the trim for me, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, I'm just going to verify these numbers. And as soon as I do that... Uh, the no numbers thing disappears and we, we get our bugs on the speed tape. Um, so it says pre-flight complete, so we're good to go. Uh, CDU is done, and that is our setup CDU FMC. And I totally screwed that up, but oh well. Uh, every time I do it, it's slightly different. I'm eventually, I'll get to a, a, a pattern. I'm, I haven't really gotten into... Uh, I'm, on, I, I'm relatively new with the CDU anyway, in the FMC. So... EFIS control panel, radio or barometer, whatever, set the decision height, it's all good. MCP is, course is not set, uh, but we're not going to use that, that's fine for now, we're going to be using it when we land. So our auto throttle is going to be on, and we have to turn on our flight director switches pilot side first, because that's the one we're actually going to be active with. A little light comes on there to let us know that's correct. And of course I forgot what my V2 is, and that's 134 knots, and that's our safe climbing speed. Um, so we got to set that in our uh, IAS MCP setting here. Uh, the initial heading, our initial altitude, bank selector. Ooh, bank selector. I like to crank it, bank it, and make my passengers as uncomfortable as possible, so I like to turn that up to 30. Um, and, of course, I can turn on and arm my VNAV right now. Uh, the APU normally would be started at this point, uh, according to my checklist. So uh, let's pretend we started the APU, and at the same time, uh, we are going to uh, 
We gotta turn on our fuel pump. So turning on our fuel pumps to just the wing ones right now. Obviously we're not gonna turn on the center one because we have no fuel there. If we do, it's gonna say low pressure because we don't actually have any fuel in that tank. So we're gonna leave those off. Normally we'd be closing the doors right now and turning on the generator for the APU and getting all this off the checklist and out of my head too because it makes sense. Uh, APU bleeder, of course you'd be turning that on because the APU is available. Um, and you'd be turning off the ground power and removing it and all the telling the ground guys to do all that kind of stuff. And then after that, of course, you turn on your hydraulic pumps, your electrical hydraulic pump switches because you got some APU power and you got your anti-collision light switch. You now you turn that on now because we're it's letting people know we're about to move because we're going to be backing out. If you notice also um, at this point right above there, uh, our in-flight uh, altitude and our uh, destination altitudes are set and they were set automatically by the uh, FMC. That was nice of it. And of course, next on the, s on the overhead panel, pre-backing up, push back checklist is the uh, damper switch. No clue. Maybe it takes time to spin that thing up. The light turns off pretty quick though, so I'm not sure what that's all about. But, good enough. So, flight deck panel and control stand. Boop, boop, doop, boop, doop. Throttle. Our throttle's down. Our speed brake is down and in, in ground detente. <laughs> Sounds like the speed brakes are in love, but that's okay with, uh, you know, the little panel. <laughs> a weird thing. Anyway, uh, trim is set. That was set by the uh, uh, FMC as well. Gosh, that thing's nice to us. Parking brake is on. Uh, speed brakes are RTO. And the engine control panel is bingo and on. Now what I did there is I just made it so that the, 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 the lower uh, screen in the middle is uh, showing engine information because this is where we're going to be when we're watching the engine spool up and we're going to be sitting there uh, waiting for our N2s to get to a certain point before we flip up the fuel cutoff to idle. Uh, so with that uh, we are ready for pushback. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick peek on our caution panels to make sure everything looks kosher on our side and on the first officer side. Uh, Anti-ice, hydraulics, air conditioning. Yeah, we're going to ignore all that stuff for now because we haven't started our engines and we don't have all that stuff working yet. So we're ready to push back. So with the